Hey guys, Aaron here from Golf Custom again. I'm doing a video today on another underrated and easily available metalworking hand tool, the file. Uh, these have a number of different uses in almost any shop from rough shaping to deburring to finishing operations. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with them and their use is not just limited to metal. You can also use them on wood, composites, all sorts of different materials. So today I'm going to have a quick chat about selecting them, you know, coarseness, size, the different types of patterns and shapes, and also on how to use them, the different techniques for, you know, making accurate cuts and also making sure that they perform as long and as well as they can. There's actually quite a surprising variety of different file sizes and shapes. Today I'm going to be talking exclusively about American pattern files, which are the type that you would normally find in any hardware store. There's also another type of file called Swiss pattern files that are more commonly found in tool and die making shops or in, you know, a machinist's workshop. The most common types of files you'll see are flat files, half round files, round files, which are round but also tapered towards the end, hand files, which are square and straight in every dimension, triangular files, which are triangular in cross section, and then needle files which come in a similar variety of shapes to the rest of the files, but they're much smaller in, in all dimensions. Needle files are generally single cut and very smooth, which means that they're useful for fine finishing on inside corners and such that wouldn't be accessible in any other way. On the left here, these three files might look very similar from a distance. The main thing that differs between them is actually the coarseness of the cut from the roughest to the smoothest. The smoothest file is actually just called a smooth file. The next roughest file is called a second cut file. And the roughest type of file is called a bastard cut file. These files are all called double cut files, which means that they actually have two different cut patterns made to form the teeth. There are also what they call single cut files that have only one set of cuts making up the teeth. Double cut files are the best choice for removing large amounts of material. Single cut files, on the other hand, are the best choice for leaving a fine surface finish. When you're using a file, you'll find that sometimes a little chip of metal from the, the workpiece can actually get stuck in between the teeth of the file. This is called pinning, and it's one of the biggest reasons that people find that a file will leave a, an uneven surface finish. To reduce pinning, you can take a little bit of oil and brush it onto your file. This helps the, p the pins, the individual little chips, get released from the teeth of the file, stops them from getting stuck in there permanently. I personally find that oil can actually make more chips get stuck into the file. So you can also use chalk, and basically you just rub a bit of chalk onto the teeth, and that little bit of chalk sitting in between the teeth stops the metal from getting stuck in there. Regardless of what you do though, you'll find that metal will still get stuck in the teeth of the file, unfortunately. So, this is where a file card comes in handy. A file card is basically an odd name for a wire brush with very short teeth. And you use this, pushing in the same direction as the cuts that make the teeth, to clean out the teeth on the file. This will help you remove any metal that's pinned in there, and if you do it often enough, will get you quite nice surface finishes. If you're working with very fine files, like this double cut smooth file, you'll find that quite often the bristles on a file card will be too big to fit in between the individual teeth. At this point, I generally use a stiff paintbrush in order to get the metal pins out of in between the teeth. When you're at the store and you're looking at files, it can be kind of hard to decide which files are good and which files aren't. Um, like with everything else, you'll find that the price to some extent is a reflection of the quality of the files. So make sure you don't go for the cheapest ones. If you have the extra money, spend a little bit more and try and get the better ones. As a good secondary indicator, I like to take a good close look at the teeth. If the teeth are cleanly cut, then the file is probably of good quality. If the teeth aren't cleanly cut, if there's torn edges, double strikes, not clear impressions of the teeth, then the file is probably of lower quality and you should try to avoid it. 
As with any other operation in the workshop, the first step to using a file is to make sure that your workpiece is firmly secured. Here I'm demonstrating proper technique for using a file. Notice that the file is only in contact with the stock on the forward stroke, and that each stroke also moves sideways across the stock. This helps prevent the creation of low spots or divots. I'm applying an even amount of downward pressure with both hands. Here's an alternative technique called draw filing. This technique is great for making finishing cuts and for creating nice, square, flat edges on a piece of stock. Draw filing generally leaves a finer finish than regular filing, but isn't as quick to remove material. After every few minutes of work with your file, you'll need to use the file card or a paintbrush to clean out metal chips from in between the teeth of the file. This helps ensure that you get the best surface finish possible. In addition to rough stock removal, files are also great for deburring work pieces. The best files for deburring are smooth, single cut files. Here I demonstrate the technique for deburring a workpiece quickly and easily. It's also good to remember that files aren't just useful on metal. Here I'm using a round file to cut a round notch in a thin piece of G10 composite sheet. 